I'll start here with some of the medication treatments and I'll let Joey jump in. Do it. And I like, I think this might be a good starting point Mm -hmm. because again, it takes us back to specific times in the cycle. So first line treatment, if you have PMDD is often SSRIs. So the antidepressants such as Zoloft, Paxil, Prozac, things that we, that you're probably familiar with, things that we've talked about. They often will recommend using this in one of two ways, either continuously, you take it daily, it's just part of your normal routine, or they do have intermittent dosing. And so huh. what they'll do is they'll only, you only start from day 14 to 28, let's say. That's how, if that's how long your cycle is, you'll take it in the luteal phase or the post-ovulatory phase of your cycle. Again, this is a very, all of this stuff is very phase specific. You have to understand kind of where like, where this terminology is coming from. So we're speaking the same language. Right. They'll, Oftentimes, if somebody is maybe a bit more apprehensive to start an antidepressant, we'll say, hey, just take it at onset of symptoms. Stop when the symptoms resolve. And you and you might have heard, well, I was told that I have to take my antidepressants yeah, every day. I, I thought it was I might a, have withdrawal. Yeah. And this sort of thing just further shows how complicated PMS, PMDD really is. Mm-hmm. Because it works. It works wow. almost instantaneously for a lot of these is there women. Any Not, other condition you know that's that's used like this? No. I don't know a single one. I thought it was a, I thought I was just kind of reading old news. Same. And hearing that. And so I don't know. Is it is there a, a placebo link? Probably yes. You know, almost always, but whatever. Yeah. The point is that practitioners across the board are recommending one of two of these sort of SSRI regimens and both of them are generally effective. And so again, it comes back to where do you take it? You take it in the luteal phase where you have your symptoms and then you can stop. So it is just, it it goes against conventional wisdom of how SSRIs are used. Yeah. Again, it's the only, and just kind of clarify what I was saying. Yeah. It's the only condition I'm aware of in which you don't take an SSRA, an SSRI every day. Yeah. Now you wean off, you change, you, you know, but in general where, where you're told that you stop it for periods of time, like st- yeah. it's now 14 days of taking it is not just so we're clear. It's not going to give you withdrawal as you know, right. so you're right. not, you're not going to be on that, um, you know, on that kind of cycle, but yeah, it's amazing that mm-hmm. it's be that sensitive to it. That's a that's a great point because we have to me- sort of mention the safety ends of these yeah. sorts of things. And the the SSRIs that I mentioned are in this setting, the kind of that 10, 14 day use range. They're they're almost always less likely to lead to those withdrawal symptoms. So they have used SNRIs, which are, you know, cousins of the SSRIs, and they do see a little bit more of a withdrawal like syndrome even after the short use. So it's so it's it's possible, it's plausible. It just it rarely happens with the agents that we mentioned, but something to okay, kind of just okay, be okay. mindful of. So. That is that is fascinating though. I, and I guess it kind of shows how little we still understand about so much of this stuff yeah. that that it works and we go, why does this work this way? This shouldn't mm-hmm. work this way, but it does. That's fascinating. Okay. So those are the, those are the pharmacological interventions. Are mm-hmm. there any others? Yeah, I'll just quickly touch on some of the birth control aspects here, mm-hmm. um, and oh, just right. one other thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, but again, I don't want to dwell on on that. Um, so, but just just you know, so it's out there because um, there are a few um, interesting caveats of the way that you do it. Um, but um, as far as the um, SSRIs, just to wrap those up, a little pointer that I thought was very interesting. PM, women with PMDD just tend to be more sensitive. We know they're more sensitive to hormones. They're more sensitive to medications uh, mm. uh, in general as well. So lower and mid uh, doses do mm. seem to be eff- effective. So I found that interesting. That We're is interesting. We're getting to the SSRIs. Yeah. Um, Dante already mentioned the last half a cycle. That's you know just so unique and and pretty amazing that it's that you know it's able to work in that way the only thing that i know of yeah. um, so there is a very specific um synthetic progestin that has gotten approved for pmdd how effective it is it's it's not it's far 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 from a silver bullet yeah. and s- still all the interest in uh in in videos like this so um but it is again a synthetic progesterone okay um it does have some of the estrogen in it it's lower dose estrogen remember a lot of sensitivity so it comes with a lower dose estrogen pill 
um, but it, it is, it is um, a progesterone, they're combined. Um, one thing that's interesting that you do with this one is it's got four days of placebo. So what oh. you're kind of trying, what they're trying to do um, is minimize a little bit of just all the ups and downs. So just keeping the period shorter, um, they found can do that, keep it down to four days. They've even found that um, even within this one or sometimes with other um, birth control, control pills to take it around the clock, not around the clock, but to take it around the calendar skip and the, to skip, skip the placebo, to skip the placebo okay. days. So they would, so oh. one, the FDA official approach is push it down to four days. Um, that's how it's packaged. But there is again, another school of thought just to keep, keep away from the period. Um, and just to keep the, the hormones steady. And essentially what you're doing is you say, well, they're sensitive to why, what's the difference? Mm. Um, Shutting down your body's own for whatever reason, mm. they're very sensitive to their body's own production of hormones. Yeah. Not quite as sensitive to the synthetic ones. Interesting. That's. I mean, that's a huge point. I was actually going to ask you to to go into that a little bit because I think just beyond birth control, it helps to better understand like what's happening with the cycle yeah. and how important it is that this thing starts from the brain. The you know the gonadotropin releasing hormone and the in the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone all that kind of stuff in that yes adding synthetic hormones or adding hormones in general is an it's enough to kind of suppress and level off the you know the fluctuations that naturally occur yes you know I mean it's just such a huge a huge part of it especially when you think about the you know if you Google a picture of the menstrual cycle and the curves of the different hormones right when you think about adding hormones like Joey said you'd think it would just increase the increase the progesterone yeah, but you're, actually you're piling on top of you're certainly piling on top of it's just a good it's more of a good principle than even just harping on the birth control okay know? and this is um, throwing a curveball to you. I've seen quite a bit of chatter and and recently of people not liking hormonal birth control. There are a bunch of negative side effects with it. So you're not and I, I believe I've heard Joe say similar things that that not everybody should be on hormonal birth control all the time. This is we're talking specifically for people who are having PMDD and it is a massive yeah, I'm life just, debilitating. Just talking about it like it's an option. And then yeah. just just to clarify, um, but back to the two key things. Um women with PMDD have um, issues with their own production, their own hormones for whatever reason. Um, but also it's not, it's, it's bigger than that too when you're using this um, product is there's only, uh, it's a steady dose. Their main, the main thing they have trouble with is the fluctuations. So even, so I would back up and say even more so than having trouble with um, their own hormones, so to say, mm -hmm. I would, I would back that way up and say much more is that it's about the steadiness of yeah. what a birth control can bring. Yeah. Okay. So the birth control is going to bring the steadiness and then whether it's four days off or just pure steady, that's where taking them um, straight through comes in um, versus, you know, that, that statement that I made about, you know, being sensitive to their own, own hormones. And I still think there's potentially something to that, yeah. but I, I would probably back up and say, when I, after I thought about it for a minute, that the main thing is the steadiness. I would definitely rewind that part for those listening and listen to that because that's ultimately for the last few minutes, that's a, that's a massive take home point. For okay. sure. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Just rewind it. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, in, in birth control in general, I, I it's going to be a general theme that Don and I talk about, and even within our own opinions, differences. But um, again, is this the end of the world? If somebody's dealing with PMDD and they're literally like, you know, their life is coming apart at the seams. The last, you know it can be up to what, seven days, uh, 10 days of a cycle and yeah. it's constant and, and they may get a divorce and all this. I mean, yeah, maybe there is some validity to that um, or, or a reason to do that. Or maybe you tried it for a period of time and the birth control just wasn't doing what you were hoping. Um, or maybe you're just opposed to it. There's nothing wrong with that either. You're, you're just flat out, hey, I want to get to the root of this. It's my body. I want to I wanna naturally figure out what's going on here. Um, I wasn't like this in my 20s. What happened? Yeah. So there are plenty of reasons why you would or wouldn't want to do it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that um, if you do the birth control, that X, Y, Z is definitely going to happen to you, that you're going to have these hideous side effects and mm -hmm. that it's the worst thing in the world. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you can listen to a lot of, you know, um, 
I don't know, traditional practitioners, you can talk to your own doctor. They're, they're going to give you the birth control advice. So if you're here, you, you, you probably would like to know maybe that there's other ways. Right. And so while I want to be honest and genuine about that being an option for you, um, you know, there is risk, um, relative risk longer term, especially if blood clots with this product itself. It's not a real high risk in general, it's, but it's high relative to if you weren't taking it. So those are two Got different it. things. Yep, yep. Um, so um, again, that's that's a very personal choice. Don't you know, leave in the comments that I'm all for birth control, birth control, please, because I'm not saying that I am. <laughs> but also, don't leave that I'm that I'm saying that's it's that if you did it, that you're totally doing the wrong thing, and that you've got to do something else. Because I'm I'm really here, just feel like I'm trying to present options as best as as we as I can it, as we can. It is a trade off. Mm -hmm. It's a trade off. There's there's you're dealing with something that is. Um, feeling insurmountable yes and we're going here's here's the set of tools mm -hmm. that are available one of these may work one of them may not mm -hmm. all of them are going to come with uh trade-offs of some sort whether it's um excessive time spent uh, uh exercising or it's money spent on supplements or it's um you know uh, uh issues from hormonal birth control like there are trade-offs but are the trade-offs better than the PMDD that you're dealing yes. with right now. Mm -hmm. Whether it was depression, we talked about depression and SSRIs, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. there's always gonna be that scale. Yeah. And I think if you live in a world where the drug is always, always bad, that you may be doing yourself a disservice in certain areas or doing a family member that you're advising disservice in some areas. Yeah. And just like the other way, if you believe that anything that's, that your PCP doesn't tell you is is wrong, um, the, if everything he says is right and there's nothing else out there, then I think you know, you're, you're probably missing some things too, especially if you're not getting results from what you want. So, okay, so it's about that scale to me, always. That's going to permeate a whole, a whole lot of this podcast, you know, and, you know yep. across mm -hmm. time.